Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. And welcome back, everybody. Just saying this word almost makes you feel good. The word is massage. When you're thinking about going for a massage, even contemplating it, it just kind of elates you, puts you in a great mood. Pretty much you know what you're going to get from that. So maybe therapeutic benefits, relaxation, all of that. Well, we're going to dig deeper into massage and really talk about the difference between a clinical massage, therapeutic, even just a spa massage. I need to find out the difference between deep tissue and Swedish. Maybe I'll get that answered from her. She's a licensed massage therapist. She's got two locations in Pennsylvania. <clears throat> Excuse me. Kellyanne Ryden joins us here today on the program. How are you doing? How are you? I'm doing great. It's wonderful to have you here. I'm detecting an accent. Where are you originally from? Um, actually, I, I am partially hearing impaired, so I very much enunciate so I can hear with my inner ear. Oh, wow. Um, but originally, I'm actually from Southern Delaware. Oh, very cool. Okay. Well, hey, you sound great. <laughs> <laughs> Thank Love you. Um, when somebody's going for a massage, how do they decide what they're supposed to get? How do you make that, that determination, whether it's therapeutic a spa massage, a sports massage, what's kind of the, the rule of thumb for all of those? Yeah, so there's a lot of differences between each. So let's just start with spa massage. Spa is generally like your feel goody, basic relaxation. It's not very deep. Um, not to say that it's not doing any work. Uh, sometimes people just need a little more circulation um, with the just the basic of just light touch therapy. And then spas also including under the umbrella would be like facials, um, like chocolate facial treatments, or if you're gonna get whole body masks with like mud or clay, um, you can get all sorts of, there's a lot out there that I don't even know about because I am not specialized in it. Um, we did touch upon it in school many, many years ago. <laughs> um, I've been in the business for, oh my gosh, almost 15 years now. Wow. Um, so school is quite, quite a ways back there. <laughs> um, but in spa, like you'll, you'll get sugar scrubs, face scrubs. You'll, there's all sorts of things for the skin. Um, sometimes they'll have estheticians come in and work on you um, and help with any skin conditions that you might have. Now, they're not dermatologists, but they do have products that will definitely benefit and help and smooth and just, you know, detoxify. A lot of it's just kind of um, like nice pampering yourself. And if you need that to relax, that's great. I mean, there are tons of options of spas out there. I think in this area, the biggest one is Hotel Hershey. They are mm -hmm. very, very known for um, their chocolate facials. Um, and, and I think they also offer uh, different types of just different off the wall um, spa types of massages that sure. are very different um sometimes it's the tool that they'll use on you if it's like warm stones or warm bamboo they'll use that on you um, and they have lots of different products to add to the the shell kind of so that's the this the spa side of things therapeutic what comes under the uh the umbrella you know, be that the umbrella what's underneath it yeah, so therapeutic is very different. It can be a mixed bag. So if anyone is saying, oh, I want to go to a therapeutic massage, I always warn them, you might want to do your research really mm. well. Um, therapeutic, it can be anything, to be honest. Not to say that it's bad, but you can have people that are doing things like Reiki or dowsers or crystals and kind of intermix that in with their work. Oh. Yeah. So some people are really uncomfortable with that. Um, sometimes they uh, do Reiki or energy work. That's kind of a little out there, in my opinion, um, not to say that it doesn't do anything or it can't help anyone. Um, but I would say just be very careful when it comes to therapeutic. There are good therapeutic massage therapists out there um, that tend to lean more towards like the clinical side. Um, but still classify themselves as therapeutic. So they might do things like ear candling, which is good. That helps to draw the wax out of the ears. Um, that can kind of be a little bit overlappage with spa. 
Um, so there's a lot of things involved with therapeutic. It can be sports massage. It can be, you know, like I said before, Reiki, or there's a lot of lot of different entities in that and modalities. Some I haven't even heard of. There's like Ashiatsu. So that one's kind of cool. The person actually has these rafters on their ceiling that they hang on to and they will actually use all their body weight on you. And sometimes they have like special socks. Um, I would call them kind of almost like aquatic that would really work well with the lotions on them. And they're using their full body weight on your body. So they're walking on you and massaging with their feet and stroking it with your feet with all their weight on you. Um, I have not personally had it done, but I've actually worked alongside a couple of girls that did it. And just the setup of the room is completely different. It's really interesting. Um, and they definitely had a lot to offer patients that really wanted deep work. Um, but it's a different set of training in the sense that you'd really need to know your bony landmarks. You can't step on like the spine directly. You have to watch the floating ribs that don't attach in the sternum in the front. So there's a lot of things in like the therapeutic realm that can be massage, that cannot be massage. Um, so there's um, reflexology that's working on the, the hands and the feet, so the pressure points in there. Those definitely have a lot of neurological things that can help um, throughout the body. So for example, like in the arch of the foot, that is like the stomach area. So if somebody is just so much in pain and they cannot handle somebody actually working on their abdomen, sometimes they'll get reflexology. And what they'll do is sometimes they'll incorporate essential oils in there to help with the bowels and tummy issues. And they'll work those pressure points in the feet because neurologically, your nerve points have to end somewhere right? So that's in the palms and the hands and in the feet. Um, so when you work those, sometimes that definitely helps with the condition itself, even though it seems a little bit odd because you're like, but your tummy's up here, right? And your feet are way down there. But actually there's um, scientific proof that working those nerve lines can actually help even incorporating a lot of essential oils. So again, therapeutic is a very, very broad term. There's so much in there. Um, there's so many modalities. Just make sure you do your research and understand what the modality is that you're getting. So you know kind of what to expect to go in there, um, what you're getting, and kind of the benefits that it's going to give you. I, I never thought of with reflexology that the nerve endings end in your hands and your feet. It never even popped in my mind. Uh, seems reasonable. That's why it works. Uh, and again, that, you know, that goes back to ancient um, Asian times. Been doing that. This was my revelation about massage in the last, I want to say a little more than six months. I went for a, I believe it was either cranial, sacral, or a massage for fascia. And so those are two separate things. Um, so cranial sacral, um, depending on their specialty within cranial sacral work, um, I'm also specialized in that. That is actually my number one specialty. Oh, wow. um, and there's there's two different categories within that. There's the biodynamic side and the biomechanic side, and I can explain that further later on. Um, and then what was the other one that you had mentioned? Fascia. Something fascia work. Yeah. So fascia is like, um, it's a bit of an odd question, but have you ever cut chicken? Yes. Okay. Not the fat part, but have you ever seen that white stretchy film that's not fat, but it's, it's, it's like that stretchy film, like it just encases the meat. That's fascia. So uh -huh. inside the body, each of our muscles, like individual muscles have fascia around it. And I actually did a study on this in one of my um, relationship courses uh, where we actually got to see on fresh cadavers, which means they were not embalmed, all the types of fascia. So fascia work wow. is completely separate from cranial sacral therapy and cranial has all, a lot of categories within itself. Uh, but fascia work is, is more hands-on and they're kind of almost like pressing into you and sinking in and then kind of slowly moving that around. It's a lot of pressure sometimes and you feel like pins and needles depending on where they're pressurizing on you. 
And then cranial sacral work is a very light touch therapy most of the time. And you're working on pressure points on the spine and in the cranium, and you're working directly with the cerebral spinal fluid. And it's natural rhythm throughout the entire body to release vectors and different things emotionally in the body or visceral tissue. So yeah, there's there's a lot in each entity. And both of those are actually really wonderful um, therapies to receive if you're struggling with, um, say, for cranial sacral with concussions, they help a lot with that, vertigo, migraines, and myofascial work, um, myofascial release. That can be a mixed bag too. Also, like they, you can work neurologically with that. You can work um, with a lot of plantar fasciitis, any type of Thing that's kind of restricting the muscles, but it's not necessarily the muscle itself. It's like the encasement that's kind of saran wrapping the muscle that can restrict the muscle, but it's not necessarily the muscle fibers itself that are restricted. So it's it's a little hard to know which is which when you're kind of trying to read your own body and you have no experience to go off of other than this hurts and doesn't feel right. What do I do about it? I believe it was myofascial release. Okay. Uh, had a couple of sessions. There was a reason I went just, you know, feeling a little bit discomfort. And I've had like minor surgeries for skin cancer and stuff like that. But the one thing that opened my eyes was I, you know, I'm used to going for like a, a spa massage and, you know, deep tissue getting in there, you know, with the elbow, like really getting in there. Part of the myofascial release was light touch. And it, it opened my eyes to done right a light touch massage can be very beneficial, but you know, we don't think of it like I'm paying money, get in there. I want you to work on me. You don't really need that. <laughs> not, you don't no, always. No, not necessarily that. at all. You're right. correct. Um, there's uh, oncology massage. Mm -hmm. I've known a gal who did that and she worked with a lot of cancer patients. Um, and of course that type of work is not deep at all. Um, it's a lot let, I mean, there's depth to it, but it's not as deep as, say, with like your elbow with uh, the deep tissue neuromuscular work. Um, but it definitely has its place. Each entity um, has its own therapeutic benefits to it. Um, so, yeah, as I said before, you want to definitely do your research and make sure you know what you're getting yourself into to make sure you're not going to be doing damage to if you currently have uh, an issue going on or a medical condition. Like, you definitely want to know about your medical condition, what's good for it, what's not. Always check with your PC doctor as well. Sure. Um, and we've had some complications like that as well. Sometimes they, we get write-offs with, yep, you're good. You can go get massaged. And then they come here and we're like, we're so sorry. This is a contraindication. We cannot take you. Wow. So, yeah, there's a lot of sometimes the medical field does not always um, fully understand the differences of the types of massages. Um, I know we've been sent a couple times stage four cancer patients and, you know, I really do feel for the doctors because they're just trying to give this person relief of what they're going through, you know, a little bit of massage, no problem. It's not going to hurt you. But, and actually if they're receiving chemo, you're going to be circulating all of that through their bloodstream at a faster rate. So it's going to make them feel sicker and you don't want to do that. Wow. Wow. Um, how did you get into all of this, Kellyanne? Where did it start for you? <laughs> Will you wind up taking courses, classes, studying massage? Yeah. So actually, that's, that's a bit of a God story. I had no intentions of actually getting into massage therapy. Um, it was actually in high school where I thought I wanted to, um, but then I kind of was talked out of it. And um, it was actually my, I, I actually had two mocks ocular migraines. Um, the first one was in eighth grade. Uh, I had little black spots in my eyes. Um, it was a terrible migraine. The next day I slept it off. Um, I was okay. But the second time in sophomore year of high school, I went blackout blind for three entire days. And of course I had no idea. My life was definitely going to change. Obviously it was pitch black darkness. I had to learn how to read, how to write, how to get dressed in the morning. How am I going to do my makeup? How am I going to do my hair? How am I going to match my clothes so I don't get embarrassed in school? Because that's, you know, what teenagers first sure. think, right? We didn't really care about the academics, but that was still a thing too. Like I'm never going to drive, you know, all these things. Um, and something just told me like, go to your chiropractor. 
And of course, I tell my mother this and she's like, what on earth is he going to do for you? And I'm like, I don't I don't know. Just just take me there. And so I was let in there. And this gentleman, he I mean, he, I had been seeing this gentleman since before I was even born. My mother was pregnant with me when she had gone to see him. So we had seen him all through childhood, um, even up through high school. So I was led in there and he performed cranial sacral therapy on me. And I actually walked out of his office seeing not great, but I was not in pitch black darkness. I could make out faces. Everything was very fuzzy, um, but I could see color. And I sat up and I said, sir, I don't, what did you do to me? Because I have to do this. Um, And he explained to me what it was. He explained to me what he did. Um, apparently as a child, I was very clumsy and I had a lot of head injuries and it just unfortunately added up to one day the lights went poof. Um, and it was just an, a migraine right behind the eyes and the sphenoid bone. Um, and something was lodged a certain way. And I guess with a lot of reading, I, that's what, that's what it, what did it in is like, I had so much reading to do in all my classes. So I'm like looking down, which is putting tension on the back of the occipital platelet. Now the occipital platelet, um, in the, in the bottom of the skull, it has the foramen where all your spinal cords go through and meet on top of the cranium. Now intercranially, there's a, there's a ledge there inside where the occipital platelet meets this sphenoid bone. That's a butterfly shaped bone behind the eyes. And that's why when you hit the back of your head, the first thing they check EMS or on the, you know, sports team field, they check your eyes. That's the first thing, because that's the first thing that goes when you hit the back of your head. And that's where those nerve lines go. Um, So apparently all that tension from keeping my head down and like working um, caused some type of disruption and a lot of the head injuries as I had a, as a child, like that kind of just added up. Not in my favor. <laughs> wow. Um, yeah. So I actually still at this point did not want to go into massage therapy. I was on track and on board 101% um, to be a chiropractor. So I did a lot of schooling aiming towards that direction. And then God just gently moved me. He he was like, no, this is this is not where you need to go. I was really struggling with calculus. It kicked my butt twice in college. Um, and I thought, geez, how am I going to get through this? Like, I know I'm being called to do cranial sacral work. And it just so happened that um, I was adopted later on in life. And the family I was staying with... Um, they said, Hey, there's a massage therapy school over there. And I think they offer, you know, classes in that you might want to check it out. So I did. And the school was literally five minutes from their house. And it was amazing that once I finished that schooling, that school actually closed down. So there was like a small window of time that God was like, you need to get in there and you need to get in there now. Um, so yeah, I mean, in that school, you learn the basics and, um, you know, each, they, they show you kind of a little bit of everything. So they showed us a little bit of lymphatic drainage. They showed us a little bit of oncology work. They showed us a little bit of cranial work. Um, and they kind of were just giving you a broad spectrum of like what's out there. And they told us like, you're going to have to specialize every two years to maintain your license and you're going to have to choose. So you can either take a spa route, you can take a therapeutic route, you can take a clinical route, but it's your choice on specifically what you want to specialize in. Well, I specialize the heck out of cranial sacral work. Um, I went to different states. I started in Maryland um, and I finished um, my coursework up until I got my licensure in it um, in Florida. So we were actually doing work in the ocean, supporting people in the water. Um, And that was the most, I don't know, just eye opening. And then we got to see on fresh cadavers what our work actually looks like inside the body. That was just so epic to me. Um, because of course you're just kind of sitting there holding pressure points and like slightly moving your hands ever so slightly. And you're like, what is this going to do? This person's going to think, wow, I'm paying how much for this person just to hold me? What is this dark magic or whatever? And it's like, no, until you actually start seeing the miracles happen, which we've had so many come through, um, whether it's physical, mental, emotional, or 
but the person's world just changes and like what they couldn't do before now they can. Um, I mean, we had one gal came to me early on. I think she was out of work for over a year and a half, um, a single mom. So she had two kiddos. Um, now she has no job, no income. And she apparently had a blunt force head trauma injury. So she was in the attic. I guess she stood up too quick. Um, I don't know if something scared her, um, but she had a raptor hit on the side of her head. And I mean, when you felt it, like it divided in, like her skull was crushed. Um, so, and she hit twice because once she hit going up, she passed out and went down, hit again on the other side. So she had two blunt force wow. traumas. Um, the effects of that, however, were sensitivity to smell, vertigo, migraines. I mean, to the severe where she was vomiting, couldn't stand up, couldn't cook. Cause even just the smell of like the oven and food, um, just, she was just so dizzy and then just throwing up in the bathroom, whether she had anything in her or not. So like, obviously work was just out of the question for her. So then you have the physical. Now the emotional part was she was the only provider of her home and her household. Um, so because she wasn't working, she didn't have income. How is she going to care for her kids? How is she going to keep the lights on? How is she going to keep her house or her apartment? So it just kind of kept stacking. And then the longer she couldn't find answers, um, that's when it kind of wore on her. Um, so we worked on her. She got better. I mean, within four to six sessions, like she was not having the spinning episodes. She was able to keep food down. She could she could drive a little bit better um, before she wasn't capable of driving at all, I think. Uh, so, I mean, there was, there was just so many things that I had seen through cranial cycle work. And even when I was going through training, a lot of the stories that my instructor had told us that, you know, he had witnessed and he was a part of. Um, so it's, it's truly amazing, and I could talk forever about it. I'm like, um, I'm just like, it's a, like a cliffhanger. Every time yes. you go into a story, your story in itself is just, when, when you say those three words, meant to be, there it is. Wh however you want to frame it, whatever the, the, with divine intervention, whatever one believes, but it was all there. And then this woman, you know, we, we have these little accidents all the time. I mean, you know, I think many of us have stood up and hit something. But I just can't even imagine what that did to her. Um, but your training and even supporting people in water wouldn't have made a lot of sense until you explain more about cranial sacral therapy and just how that movement uh, makes such a big difference. Minimal movement can make such a huge difference. Uh, we're out of time. I could just keep going. This is like, <laughs> like, no like so interesting. Yeah. Um, what's the name of your practice? Is it your name? Yeah. So as of right now, it's Kellyanne Clinical Massage. I am going through some rebranding. My intention is to actually segue it to Healing Grace Clinical Massage and Wellness because um, we do collaborate with um, multi different um, establishments for counseling to incorporate that with our trauma work with the cranial sacral therapy. Um, and then we coordinate with other doctors and clinical um, physicians with our work too. Wow. Um, where are you located? Yeah, so our main location is actually in Camp Hill. Um, it's right across the street from the Eisenhower Elementary School. It's at 355 North 21st Street, um, and we are Suite 300. So it is a building complex that houses multiple different businesses. Um, so it's just one big building. Uh, you have to kind of see the directory when you come in the door. The other building is in Carlisle on Walnut Bottom Road. Um, that's 850 Walnut Bottom Road. Um, and our suite there is three, Suite 300, or sorry, Suite 305, excuse me. And I share that suite with my collaborative partner, Caroline Diller. Um, she is a chiropractor and she owns Cumberland Valley Family Chiropractic. And unfortunately, she is so booked that she is not um, taking new cases, uh, which is a bummer, but um, she does fantastic work. So if she does come on a wait, have a waiting list, it's well worth getting on it. <laughs> How interesting that you, your next two partnered with, however you want to phrase it, with a chiropractor, and you almost went down that that road in the beginning. Yeah, right? so it's it's a great tag team that we have going on Seriously. as well. 
Yeah, I use that phrase all the time. <laughs> you know, it's like in wrestling, you know, tag somebody in. Um, Kellyanne, fantastic talking with you. Thank you for sharing your story, your transparency, because it says so much about all of this work. And I uh, appreciate you being here. Looking forward next time we get a chance to talk. Yes, thank you so much sir, for having me. Good oh, to see okay. you. You too. We'll be right back. Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. Are you looking for even more of the podcasts and hosts that you love? The Podcast Business News Network is proud to announce that you now have even more ways to listen live. Check out the MyTuner Radio, Online Radio Box, and Simple Radio apps on iOS and Android, or find us online. Search for Business News Network on MyTuner-Radio.com, or search Podcast Business News Network on Streama.com and OnlineRadioBox.com slash US. Take your podcasts on the go and don't miss a minute of the action. Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. For nearly 2,000 severely injured veterans, everyday life has become filled with barriers. Day-to-day -day simple tasks can become pretty daunting. I have to carry my chair up two flights of steps or have somebody do it for me. What scares me the most is just the falling. When I'm struggling with my house, I think, you know, to have that one great barrier just knocked down, I mean, it's... It's crucial. Home for Our Troops is a wonderful nonprofit that builds a mortgage free, fully adaptive, handicap accessible house, and there's no catch. It'll be our very first home that we've ever owned. This is a game changer. This is where your life begins again. We need you to join us in completing this important mission. Please visit hfotusa.org and help build homes and rebuild lives. Because of you, everything's it's going to be okay.